Welcome back to Anchor 10. My friend Gary Black posted the following about thieves. I'm going to steal your car. I'm serious. I already have a plan. I've been watching your driving habits and observing your daily interest and schedule. To put it another way, I've been observing you and I understand more about you than you realize. I understand you better than you understand yourself. So when the time is right, I will steal your car and I will drive it away. And you won't believe how fast it'll happen. And you won't believe it'll happen to you. And not only will I steal it, but I'll chop it up. See, I know how to take identification numbers from the engine frame and transmission. And I know how to sell it to friends of mine who will sell it to friends of theirs, who will ultimately sell it to strangers. You see, I am part of a highly active, effective group, and I can say with assurance that you will never see your car ever again. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, that's not an effective way to start a message on how to pray and get dressed for battle by putting on the armor of God and taking my thoughts captive. But let me tell you why that's effective. Because you don't believe that I'm a car thief. Or precisely, you don't believe I'm capable of doing what I just said I would do. Which is exactly why professional car thieves are so good at what they do. See, you don't believe you're being watched. You don't believe that you're being vulnerable. You simply don't believe that it will ever happen to you. Now, let me share something more realistic and truthful. Hi, my name is the devil, and I want to share with you a little secret with you today. You ready? Here it is. I'm going to steal your soul. I'm going to steal your joy. I'm going to steal your family. I'm going to steal your faith. I'm going to steal your identity and even your sanity. You see, I've been watching you, and I know you. I know your schedule and your habits. I know what you do when nobody's looking. I know what tempts you, and I know how to capitalize on that. When I make my move, it'll happen fast. It'll happen so fast, you'll be dazed and confused trying to figure out how this could happen to you. I'll attack your family, including your children. I'll distract you. I'll derail you, resist you, and ultimately do my very best to destroy you. And by the way, I have friends that will help me. I'll chop up your soul and pass it down the line to them. My friends and I will invade your mind, body, and emotions. And I will paralyze you with crippling thoughts and paralyzing fears. I'll attack you physically, mentally, and emotionally. And at just the right time, I will steal your joy and drive it off a cliff. I'll put Thoughts of doubt, discouragement, delay, difficulty, despair, depression, discomfort, and darkness to cloud your mind. I know God's word better than you, and I'll make you doubt it, deny it, distort it, and eventually never believe or submit to it. Because I am the best liar in the universe, I love making you think my voice and the things I suggest to you are coming from your Father in heaven. But they are coming from me. The Father of Lies, which, by the way, I love that title. I absolutely love it when you blame God instead of me for all the horrific things done to you and the people you love. I'm so good at what I do. I'll make you live your life so sure of yourself that you'll actually think that you're going to change God's mind on Judgment Day telling him that what he wrote in his word was wrong and you are right. Friends, you should know that I'm so good at making people do these things. And one of the reasons is you don't believe I can do this. You just simply don't. You don't believe I have a vast network of friends helping me. You don't believe that I'm watching you. You don't believe I'm studying you. You don't believe that I know you. But I know you better than you know yourself. I love people like you. Self-sufficient, self-assured, and prideful. 
Because you don't even know that you're being deceived. And I love that most of all. Like I said, we're going to talk about how to win the spiritual battles in your life and overcome the spiritual mayhem or warfare in your life. And frankly, I just did. Because the devil is real. And he hates you. And he wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your finances, your life. And he would be happy for you to take your own life. He has a deliberate, willful plan against your life. And he has a goal to destroy your body, your mind, or spirit, or all three. And his purpose in doing this is to keep God's purposes from you. Deny God the glory he might receive from your life and ultimately destroy your life. He seeks to replace God with himself in your life. The devil desires not only to destroy what you have, your possessions, your career, your family, your reputation in the community. He seeks to destroy who you are. He wants to demolish your character. He seeks to destroy your peace, your joy, happiness, contentment, your enthusiasm for life, your willingness to take godly risks, your generosity, and all other emotional states that are healthy or good. The devil has attacked every person that has ever lived, and you are no exception. And as long as you are alive and the devil exists, you will experience spiritual attacks. That's the bad news. And I'm sorry about giving you this bad news that you were born for a battle. The good news is that you were born to win. Because the Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, As greater is he that lives in you than he that is in the world. See, Satan's not afraid of you, but he is afraid of who is in you, the Holy Spirit. And when God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is in you, you don't ever have to be afraid of Satan. You don't ever have to be afraid of the devil. But you do got to get dressed for battle. See, many people say that Christians don't believe in the reality of Satan. The Barna Group did a study in 2009, and only one in four Christians believe in the reality of Satan. But the devil is alive and well on planet Earth on earth, set on destroying the work of Jesus Christ whenever he can. And scripture clearly teaches this. The Apostle Paul says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. And Satan loves it when people refuse to believe that and about him and how he operates. And that means he's totally camouflaged and covered by their lack of belief, which allows him to come under the radar, totally undetected. The question is not whether he exists, whether we're engaged in spiritual warfare, or whether we're tempted. The answers are clear. The devil does exist. We are engaged in warfare. We are tempted. The question we have to ask is how, we, how can we resist and overcome the devil's attacks? How can we defeat him, take authority over him? You see, warfare praying is believing you have the authority in Christ to exact judgment on the enemy of your soul and experience what no weapon formed against you will prosper really means. It is power praying, fighting from the place of victory, trusting in the finished work of Christ that gives you resurrection power to take dominion and authority over every ruler, every authority, every power of this dark world, and against every spiritual force of evil in heavenly realms. Power praying starts with you getting dressed for battle. How do you do that? Well, it starts with you putting on God's armor. How do you put on God's armor? Well, it's real simple. Through prayer and action. You can only put it on through prayer and action. You can't just say, got the armor of God on. We got to put these things on every single day and live your life with them on for the rest of your life. You got to put on God's armor so that you can take a stand against the devil's schemes. Here's what it says in Ephesians. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. So I'm reading it again so that you get it. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand... Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. You need the belt of truth because behind every self-defeating thing that you'll ever do is a lie that you believe. And you need to know the truth as the antidote to take those thoughts captive to. You need the breastplate of righteousness in place. This is so important. If God declares you righteous, you can live a pure and holy life. Not a perfect life. 
But if we're going to do the things that Jesus did, we're going to have to live a righteous life like Jesus did. And his grace will bridge the gap for our failures. So we need to live righteously. We need to have our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, which means we always need to be prepared to live out and share out the good news, to go when God tells us to go. Acts 20, 24 is my life is worth nothing to me until I finish the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others about the wonderful grace of God. So that's what my, that's my mission verse. And we need to always be prepared to go out. In addition to all of this, he tells us to take up the shield of faith and extinguish the flaming arrows. See, by faith, you know what comes from God, what comes from the devil, what comes from the world, and what comes from you and your old nature. By faith, you'll be able to take those thoughts captive. And you need to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You see, everything starts with salvation. Everything starts with salvation. In Revelation 12, we see a glimpse of, of just a, of warfare going on when it, when it says this, the great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world was thrown down to the earth with all of his angels. And then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens, it has come at last, salvation, power, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ for the accuser, here it is, of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. But watch this, and they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony and that they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. You see, when you look at that scripture, you need those four things established in your life before you defeat the devil with the three-point action plan in Revelation. It says, and now has come salvation. Everything starts with salvation. You get salvation, you get power. You get power, you get the kingdom of God living inside of you, operating on the kingdom principles, and with that you get authority. Salvation, power, kingdom, and authority. You get those four things established in your life, then you'll be able to apply the three things that you overcome the devil with the blood of the lamb. That's what Jesus did for you. That's trusting in the finished work of Christ and to pray that blood. Your testimony is praying in authority over the enemy and you pray with the assurance that you know that you're living your lives knowing that to, to, to live this life, you're living for God. And then it tells us to pray in the spirit, with the spirit, in the spirit on all occasions. And with this in mind, always pray for everyone in the body of Christ. That's putting on the armor each and every day. Second Peter says this, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. It says resist him. Standing firm in the faith. How do you do that? You put on the armor because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Now let's look at the second part of this anchor, 2 Corinthians 10. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought and make it obedience make it obedient to Christ. See, arguments and pretensions are part of those flaming arrows that Paul talks about in Ephesians 6. So what do they look like? Well, see if any of these sound familiar to you. Fear. You have good reason to be afraid right now. Doubt. You can't trust God or trust that God will work in this situation. Lust. You need to have your needs met. And this is a fine way to get your needs met. Loneliness. You are alone. You'll always be alone and therefore you'll always be miserable. Guilt. You should feel guilty about your sins and live with that shame. It's the least you can do considering all that God has done for you. Unforgiveness. You can never forgive that person for what they did to you. And even if you could, why would you? Anger. You've been hurt, and you have the right to be angry. Discouragement. You'll never have what you want in life or become the person you want to be. So don't even get your hopes up. Pride. I don't really have a problem. This stuff's not really real. I can handle it. I can get well without the help of God. You see, behind every self-defeating thing that we'll ever do is a lie that we believe. And the antidote for us is to believe and receive the truth from Scripture to take that thought captive to. I must develop the discipline of a disciple to learn how to be an expert taking thought captive person. The defeated and victorious 
Christian both get bombarded with temptations, pretensions, and everything that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. The defeated Christian gives into the lies. The victorious Christian demolishes the lies and the stronghold that the lie will always lead you to. The defeated Christian feels defenseless. The victorious Christian takes authority. The defeated Christian fights hoping for victory one day. The victorious Christian declares the victory in Jesus' name and is a force to be reckoned with in the spiritual world. Now listen, some of you are getting devoured. Some of you are giving up ground. Some of you are standing your ground and some of you are taking back ground. You are called to take back ground and advance the kingdom operating under kingdom principles under kingdom authority. Greater is he who lives in you than he who lives in the world. Let's live like it and not just quote it.